In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 16. Last Sunday, we heard about the unbelieving Apostle Thomas in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, who refused to yield his faith unless he could see and touch the five holy wounds of the risen Christ. Today's Gospel, however, takes us back to a time before the sacred passion, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus explains and assures us who he is, the Good Shepherd. That's why we call the second Sunday after Easter Good Shepherd Sunday. But what relation does today's Gospel have with Easter? It doesn't contain the joyous Easter message about the risen Christ. We don't hear today an account about the resurrection or from the time before Christ's ascension into heaven. Today we hear about the Good Shepherd, who he is, what he does, and what he will do for his sheep. Last Sunday we heard Christ explain how important it is to have faith. Because thou hast seen me, Thomas, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. To have faith is something very important, and Christ underlines it with the following words, which you can find in the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. What is faith? How does it work? Faith is confidence or trust in a person or a thing. It can also mean fidelity. It can also mean the belief not based on physical proof or it may refer to religious belief. The church teaches us that there are two kinds of faith, human faith and supernatural faith. Mere human faith is accepting the testimony of man. Religious faith, the faith we ought to have, is accepting the, reveal, the revealed word of God. The object of this faith is truth about God and the things that pertain God. The object of faith is not something seen or sensed, nor itself. It is the object grasped by the intellect. Faith, says St. Paul, is the evidence of things that appear not. Hebrews 11, verse 2. The object of faith cannot be, at the same time, the object of scientific knowledge. St. Gregory says, When a thing is manifest, it is the object not of faith, but of perceiving. To have faith means that we need to make an internal act of believing under the direction of the will. To truth that is proposed for belief upon sign, sign, sufficient authority. In case of religious belief, the authority is God, who is truth itself. One and the same act of faith in divine truths involves three things. Believe in God, that is, believe that God exists. Believe in God, that is, to recognize His Word as the truth. Believe in God, that is, to accept His words as the rule of life and the way to salvation. But what does this broad explanation of what faith is to do with today's Gospel, with the Good Shepherd? The answer is faith. Today's Gospel is again about having faith and trust in God. Jesus himself tells us, I am the Good Shepherd. 
the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Again Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. As the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. A moment ago we heard that belief in God is to recognize and accept his word as truth. In today's Gospel Jesus gives testimony of himself, I am the Good Shepherd, I lay down my life for my sheep. Jesus tells us today that we can believe in him, that he will take care of us, and that he will give his life for us, for our salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, and because of this He is God. Jesus Christ is God, and therefore we ought to have ac accept and therefore we ought to have faith in Him, faith and trust, and can accept the truth of faith based on his divine authority. But let's focus a little more on the Good Shepherd and his work. At another occasion Jesus talks about a Good Shepherd who leaves 99 sheep behind to find the one sheep that got lost. This parable was meant to show the love which God has as the Good Shepherd for individual sheep of his flock who go astray. When the Good Shepherd finds the lost sheep, he does not chide or chastise it for having run away, but carries it back lovingly in the fold. And when he hath found it, lay upon, laid upon his shoulders, rejoicing, and coming home called together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I found my sheep that was lost. The parables of the Good Shepherd show the love of Jesus for us. By the smile of the Good Shepherd, our Lord teaches us how great His compassionate love is for all mankind. All men, Jews and Gentiles, are His sheep, and He gave His life for all, being sacrificed on the cross to redeem them from sin and from hell. Jesus, therefore, is the only Good Shepherd, and all others who are called to the pastoral care and office are Good Shepherds only as far as they imitate Him in their love and care for the flock confided to them. Moreover, Jesus knows his own. He knows all about them and their needs, their weakness, their thoughts, their endeavors. He leads them into the fold of the church, his church. He helps them by his grace. He enlightens them by his doctrine and nourishes and strengthens them with his very flesh and blood in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. His pastoral love is therefore infinite and divine. The following doctrines are especially conveyed by today's Gospel. The sacrifice and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord distinctly foretells his sacrifice and death in the words, I lay down my life for my sheep. Jesus is the Lord and Chief Shepherd of the redeemed. The sheep belong to him because he has bought them with his precious blood. The One United Catholic Church Our Lord foretold that the Gentiles also would believe in him, and that all the faithful, both Jews and Gentiles, would be united in the one fold under one shepherd. According to our Lord's words, there was only one church, and this church was to be united. It was not a split 
it was not to be split up into a multitude of national churches in every part of the world, but was to spread itself by degrees over the whole face of the earth, and all nations were to be gathered into its fold. The church foretold by our Lord was to be a Catholic or universal church. Now, this one, united and Catholic church, which according to the, the good pleasure of our Lord, he founded, can only be the Roman Catholic Church, in which the faithful of the five parts of the world are joined together in real unity of faith and government of the one chief shepherd. And that's why Christ instituted the office of the papacy and made St. Peter the Apostle, the first Pope, and the chief among the Apostles. Because the Church needs to have a supreme visible head on earth, the Vicar of Christ, who acts in the person of Christ and is able to make decisions on things concerning our holy faith and morality. And wherever the Pope or the Church is unable to execute its authority, its jurisdiction, there is chaos, disunity, and quarrel, and abuse. Daily we give our faith so easily away, believing what family, friends, and strangers tell us. It was on TV, so it must be true. But the guy on the radio said, I saw it on the internet. These are phrases we hear every day. People quickly believe news or accounts based on other people, people's authority. And yet many have great difficulty to believe in God, to believe God, who is all truth, and to accept his teachings and his law. Jesus tells us that he is the Good Shepherd, that he loves us and that he will take care of us. So let us have faith in him, let us trust the words of his mouth, which are truth, and be nourished with the sweet milk of his doctrine. Let us hearken and follow the voice of his authority and follow the footprints of the Good Shepherd as his sheep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.